So do you feel like you have tried everything and your edges still look like this or this or this or this or this or you are on your way there? This video is going to help tell you everything you are doing wrong. I am telling you why you don't have edges. Not only why, but I'm also telling you how you can fix them because sometimes knowing what is wrong, telling you the wrong thing is actually just as important as knowing what's doing right. And I do have a playlist with a lot of tips about growing your edges and I'll link that at the end of this video. But in this one, I'm focusing on the things that you are doing wrong which might be a big reason to why you don't have edges. So if you want to know five easy tips on why you don't have edges, but not only why you don't have them, how you can get them back because you need to stop doing those things, keep watching all the way to the end. It's a quick video, quick tips. So let's get straight into it. Hey love, it's Angelica, AKA Angie B. If you are new, my name is Angelica. I post videos twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays. I post videos all about growing long natural hair, growing your edges, protective styling, a little bit of skincare, makeup, and fun stuff here and there. So if that seems like something you might be interested in, consider subscribing. The subscription button is right down there as well as the bell icon. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications every single time I post. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so the first thing you're doing wrong that is damaging your edges and why you do not have edges is because you constantly cover up your damaged edges with frontals. Now frontals are one of the worst things you can do to cover your edges with because you have the friction of the lace and then you have the additional glue and then you have the increased moisture because you have kept that place completely covered for a prolonged period of time or extreme dryness because now the glue is completely dry and that area is not moisturized, it's just completely dry and it is ripping out your edges and damaging your edges. So here's the thing, I see lots of these new inventions that are coming up to cover up damaged edges but all they do is lead to more damage and I'll show some examples on the screen right here. Ponytails where they like tie your own hair up and then they put a frontal on the ponytail. Um, braids where you do box braids and then you sew in a frontal braids like it makes no sense to me but box braids on a frontal and then you sew that down on the front of your head or even just a necessary frontals that are added you know when you have a weave on like you do a weave but then you sew a piece of frontal down in the front that could also lead to damage because you're using glue you're using so many things on many because you're using so many different things on your edges and you are ripping them out now as you can see today my edges are semi-laid and it reminded me how much i hate doing my edges and how damaging it is this is the first time i have laid my edges down like semi laid my edges down in months i can't even remember the last time i did it i usually just brush my edges up so yeah today you know I thought let's let's do a little something so you can see my edges because my hair is in a head wrap but like I said you need to avoid doing these it causes severe severe damage I understand that having really bad edges can be very embarrassing especially because it's in the front of your head and all you want to do is cover it up but the thing is if you spend less time covering up you have a longer time with your edges actually out because they'll grow back in if you continue covering them up every single day you're just going to prolong the process. You're going to extend how much damage you have. Maybe it was just like a small piece in the front. It's going to keep going further and further and further back. So I would just suggest if you have like a special event, like a wedding or something where you're going to have pictures that you're going to keep like for a lifetime, like something important and you're feeling very insecure about your edges and it can drop your confidence for that day, then you can go ahead and do like the frontal situation for that day. But on a regular day, try and grow your edges out by stopping to do unnecessary frontals. The next one is you lay your edges every day, every day or every single time you go out. This will cause severe damage. Like I said, I haven't laid my edges in months. I literally cannot remember how long it's been. First of all, gels are extremely drying. It doesn't matter if you're using a gel that has like no alcohol or is not as drying as usual. It's still drying, okay? If you're using things like got to be glue, that's too harsh on your edges. And then the friction of the brush, even if it is a soft brush, a toothbrush, a spoolie, whatever. If you're combing those edges every single day, it's going to cause severe damage. Also combing, usually you find a way of laying your edges that suits your face, which means most of the time when you do your edges, you lay them in the same way. It's kind of like making a part and the same part in your hair every single day. You might start to notice that your hair is thinning in that area or you start to de develop like a bald patch I'll put a picture here so you can see what my hair looks like I used to part it in the same way when I was relaxed and I had like a patch 
in this area i think or this area whatever i had quite a big patch where i didn't even notice that my edges were like thinning out and i had like quite a big patch of like a bald spot kind of so if you stop laying your edges every single day it is going to reduce the amount of hair that you have there just brush it just reduce the friction use literally the softest and largest brush you can use on that area so that you are not causing unnecessary friction and get used to the idea that your edges don't have to be laid every single day you can just brush them back and they will look fine totally good and if you want to be wearing your edges in like you know the wave kind of state a lot more I'm sure you're going to want to let your edges grow out so you can actually do that. So do it occasionally and leave enough time for your hair to actually grow out. The third thing is something that I used to be the queen of and this is having leave out. Now every time you do your hair in a weave, sure the weave is a protective style and yes the most, the most natural way, what am I trying to say? The best way to make your wig look the most natural is to leave some of your hair out provided it's the perfect texture blend between the hair that you're using and if you can leave your edges out it makes the wig look so natural it looks like the hair is growing out of your scalp seamless blend here's the problem this used to happen to me every single time one usually the hair that we get is not an exact texture match so you have to do some kind of manipulation to make sure that your hair matches the texture of your wig of your weave so let's say you get something that's like very curly like exactly like your curl pattern um usually if you just wash your hair and come out it's not going to look like that you're going to have to use some products like stylers a hair gel or if you're wearing like a bone straight wig you're going to have to flat iron your hair in the front or use like a roller set or something you're gonna have to do a lot of manipulation to make sure that your hair blends with the texture and that can lead to breakage now this is the good thing it's really not a good thing it's just better than the frontal but it, you know what I mean it's the lesser of two evils but it's still bad so this was what my worst experience was, what used to happen every single time with weaves. My hair would not come out. I would not get traction alopecia. However, I would have severe breakage and the hair in the front of my hairline, like at least till this length, like all the amount of hair I would leave out when I do a weave was usually about this long. So like about two inches and it wouldn't get past that because for the first maybe week and a half, the hair would just blend seamlessly with the wig. But then when your hair starts to grow out and the tracks are like a little bit lifted, whenever you brush your hair up, you're kind of brushing it up against the tracks and eventually it leads to breakage. And then you have like a whole straight line of all the hair that you leave out, even the hair in the section where if I would make like a part, the, the, sec the hair that would come out in that specific section would also always be sure it always have really really bad damage and then because it had damage i would be like i don't want to make the same damage on the other side of my head so i'd rather just continue making the part on the same side where there's damage and it would continue to get more and more and more damaged so wigs saved my life when it comes to that whenever i want to have that look that i have with a weave i just rather do it with a wig although i don't wear wigs all the time as well because they can also be very bad for your hair and then another thing that a lot of people do I also used to do this is to either relax the hair that's left out of the weave like even if it's not time to relax your hair you just be like I want my hair to be like super smooth and blend with the texture so I'm just gonna relax just the front part which leads to over processing also sometimes even coloring you won't believe I've done this before I wanted to have a full blonde wig and I was like I want to go blonde too I dyed my hair blonde and relaxing and bleaching or dyeing is the worst combination ever. My hair was relaxed and it was bleached and it broke so much. That's actually what led to like my first initial big chop. And yes, so the hair, coloring the hair, dyeing the hair, bleaching the hair to match the weave is the worst decision you could ever make. If you're thinking of going like fully blonde, platinum blonde, and the only purpose you're doing it is to match with your wig, just wear, is to match your hair to your weave, just get a wig. Or have no leave out, which is also kind of damaging, but again, lesser of two evils. The next thing that could be causing you to have no edges is you braid your edges now this is always a ridiculous concept to me every time a person who's never braided my hair before like a new person starts to braid my hair and when they reach the front i'm like don't braid my edges they always look so confused like what do you mean why should i not braid 
your hairline and i'm like like look how short this hair is like it's a different texture it is very short it is very delicate there's no reason to put it into a braid because all you're doing is ripping it out eventually it's still gonna come out of the braid so it's either gonna come out looking good or it's gonna come out broken or your braids are going to rip it out so i'll show a picture of what not to do which is what i see a lot of people doing this is definitely an extreme case because they are jumbo box braids but even with tiny box braids and Sen senegalese twists people will do a whole line of just edges tiny braided first of all your edges can't handle that weight because the hair is a different texture it is very short it's definitely going to pull it out and second of all it's just too tight and it's literally pulling the hairs out of your scalp please don't do that if you know where this second example picture is from you can please let me know because it just always pops up i don't know who is the owner of this picture but you can credit the person in the description box in the comment section below if you know who it is but there's this picture which is a perfect example of how not to do how not to braid your edges and then the correct way to do it so it's still like you know it still looks neat but you leave your edges out and the fifth tip is if and when you straighten your hair you do multiple passes on your hairline because of course it's in the front of your hair you want it to look extra neat and extra sleek so i see people use this like stick I don't know what it's called it's like for flyaways and it's like a balm stick that you can use on your edges now this is supposed to be put after you finish flat ironing your hair but I see people put it on their edges and then flat iron your hair so that causes permanent damage I've seen people do this with coconut oil as well and they say that it infuses the protein into your hair no it doesn't honey it just damages your hair it makes your hair super sleek and super straight and, and then it causes some good old heat damage that's why your hair looks so nice and straight it's because it's damaged so please avoid doing that don't do multiple passes just do it like the rest of your hair and if you can find anything like one of those balm sticks or edge control to lay your hair down in the front if that's what you want you can go ahead and do that but doing those multiple passes even the same way like if your hair is in a weave and you flat iron the front part it's the same thing it might not cause traction alopecia for your edges to be completely gone but they will be severely damaged and broken. Now, side note, if you actually suffer from alopecia, not traction alopecia, but alopecia areata, this is specifically a medical condition, and these tips, you might be doing everything right, and you still are suffering from having no edges. This is a medical condition, and the best person you can speak to is a medical professional. They can help you, but if you're doing any of these things, you are not helping yourself, and you can watch my other edges videos. Those can help you, but... Ultimately, it's a medical condition and your health practitioner would be the appropriate person to give you the ideal thing that you can do to help your hairline grow back if that's something you're suffering for because of suffering from because of your alopecia. If you want more videos on edges or anything else, just let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up and comment in the comment section below what you'd like to see. Hit my face right there if you didn't hit subscribe in the beginning. Hit my face right here if you'd like to check out my other YouTube channel about giving YouTube tips. Watch the two videos on the side of the screen right here if you'd like to see any of my older videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one.